Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's been a little while since I uploaded a video because, well, quite a few things have happened in the last year. Um, I bought my first house, I was organising the Global LabVIEW Architect Summit, but more excitingly, I created my very first LabVIEW training course, which you can find the link for in the description below. It's intended for anyone who wants to learn LabVIEW from the ground up. And on that training course, there are 10 hours worth of videos, there's exercises and demo code. So please share if you know anyone who wants to learn LabVIEW. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk about what's new in the DQMH world. And, well, there's quite a bit. And my interest for this video grew when I listened to the DQMH podcast, specifically episode 10, DQMH 6, release and the big announcement. So let's dive into that. In case you weren't aware, that podcast introduced the DQMH Consortium. So if you go to dqmh.org, you'll get to the DQMH Consortium page. And this consortium was developed so the future of DQMH could be secured. Because it's got to the point now where DQMH is bigger than just one person or one company. We now have a consortium of people, a board of directors, who are helping to test, maintain and future-proof DQMH. And so it's a really great positive step. And you can find more information about it on the dqmh.org website. Right, let's switch over to LabVIEW so we can check out some of the cool features of DQMH 6. And to help us out with that, I've created a very simple application with just a single DQMH module. So if I run this launcher, you'll see it's a very straightforward system that appears to be rising a value between about 0 and 5 or 6, and then reverting back to between 0 and 1. Okay, so nothing too complicated here. But let's check out how I've implemented this. So I'll stop that and head over to the main VI of my DQMH module, which is here. And let's head over to the block diagram. In order to implement that code, I created a helper loop. So underneath my event and message handling loop, I have a helper loop here. And in case you're unfamiliar with what helper loops are, Helper loops allow your DQMH module to be continuously doing something in the background. And I have some examples of those here, so it could be a control system that just needs to regularly update it. It could be an advanced user interface handler which is controlling splitters or sub-panels. Or it could be a message pump. So every x milliseconds you could be pumping messages back into your DQMH module. And that's very common in Active Framework. But in this helper loop, every time it times out, I'm adding a previous value to a random number, or if the previous value is greater than 5, I'm reverting everything back to 0. I'm then sending a broadcast message up to some other modules. So helper loops are extremely helpful and solve lots of issues. However, helper loops isn't the focus of this video. What I want to show you now is some magic. So here I have a broadcast message. I'm now going to right click this broadcast message and I'm going to select find DQMH broadcast event frames. If I click on this right click menu item, it's going to scan my LabVIEW project and find every event structure that's going to respond to this message. So whenever I send this broadcast message, the event structure in my tester is going to update. If I go back to my launcher by double clicking, my launching VI event structure will execute as well. But also, if you just have a random VI that's registered for this particular event, that will also be picked up. So I have random VI here, and if I double click that, you can see even though this isn't a DQMH module, because this VI is in memory and it's been registered to use update process variable, this brand new right click menu of finding event handlers will pick it up. So whenever you have a broadcast event and you want to work out who's going to be responding to this message, you can just right click and select find DQMH broadcast event frames. And it will scan your project and find all callers. So this right click menu of find DQMH broadcast event frames is a great addition to DQMH 6. 
I'm going to be using it all the time now. However, on the same theme of helper loops, I want to pose the question, what do we do with these errors? What's the most straightforward way of sending these errors from here, or we might have some critical errors like this one here, how do we send those up to our message handling loop for reporting or sending up to our calling modules? Well, in DQMH6, there's a brand new error reporting VI, which is specifically made for helper loops. So if we do control space, and then just type in helper loop, you'll find the DQMH error handler helper loop. And if we just click that down onto the block diagram, you can see we have this brand new VI with an H in it, H for helper, so we can wire up our errors. So I'm going to wire up this critical error and also the error from my control system. Now I also need to wire up a couple of other inputs. The most important one would be the message queue in. So I'm going to create a little bit more space here and below. Then I can take this message queue and connect it to the rest of the system and save. So to find out how my helper loop is going to respond to errors now, I've added this control and whenever I click it, I'm going to produce this error 5000. So let's do control E onto the front panel, control R to run and simulate helper loop error. And now you can see our errors were safely reported. We can click continue. However, by doing this, it means that the default error handling strategy is always going to be implemented. So let's go to our tester and run our tester, start the module and show the module panel. And from here, I'm going to simulate helper loop error. And you can see the error information from my helper loop was sent to the calling module. In this case, it was my module tester. And we can stop those. However, there's one more input I should have wired. And if I move this code down a little bit, it's this input at the top called error debug. So if I create a constant for this, I'm going to call this control loop. And save. So now if I go over to my tester and run it, do a start module, event simulate helper loop error. The error information now says it was the control loop that caused that error. So with this new VI, we can pinpoint the exact location of where errors occurred. Because we might have one helper loop, we might have a hundred helper loops, all launched dynamically. So this brand new VI, the DQMH error handler helper loop, is a must have in all of your future helper loop needs. And I want to show you another instance where this is particularly helpful. But I'm going to do that by creating a brand new DQMH module. So if I go to Delacore DQMH module, then add new DQMH module, and I'll call this module helper loop test. And for the module type, I'm going to choose one of my templates called wizard and I'll click OK. In this brand new DQMH module, I'll open up the main VI just to show you that it's using subpanels. And if I go over to the block diagram to where I am updating the user interface, you can see that I'm essentially launching helper loops dynamically. So these helper loops don't exist on my main block diagram. And so the ability to report errors directly to my message handling loop is very helpful. So if I go into one of those extra user interfaces, such as here, you can see I'm using that brand new error handler for helper loops, VI. And this will run in exactly the same way as before. So if I run the main VI and click on error test, you'll see I'm able to handle those errors, even though this helper loop was launched dynamically. And in case you're wondering how all of this works, here I'm implementing the state pattern, object-oriented design pattern. So I can create child classes here, even override things like what the next state will be, previous state, the user interface, etc. 
For this last demonstration, I'm going to show you how we can update an existing DQMH module that could have been created in DQMH4 or 5 and update that to DQMH6. To do that, I'm going to create a new module that's using DQMH 4.0, that's the MGI Panel Manager Framework. So I'm going to create this module, and again, this module is using DQMH 4, so I'll show you how we can upgrade this to use DQMH 6. Okay, so I've created this brand new module called Updating to DQMH 6. Now to update this from DQMH 4 to DQMH 6, I'm going to go to Tools, Delacore, DQMH, Module, and then Validate DQMH Module. I'll select that, and we can select all DQMH modules in the project, so there are three here, but I'm just going to choose the one we've just created. So updating to dqmh6.lvlib, click OK. And once the validator has been through all of its tests, you'll notice that there are quite a few things that have been updated, such as error handling and even the way we are launching DQMH modules. So between DQMH4 and DQMH5, we changed how we're launching those modules. So if you have a big list here, I recommend selecting these items individually, reading the details, and then selecting Fix Issues. And then by selecting Fix Issue, there's lots of DQMH scripting that's happening behind the scenes to update from older versions of DQMH to the newest version. So I'll update all of these messages one by one. Once you've fixed all of these issues that have been reported, I highly recommend that you then click Rescan Current Module. Because by doing this, you might uncover more things that need to be fixed based on what you've just changed. So here we have some new issues, so I'll fix those. And I'll rescan again. And these issues, I was just saying there are some obsolete items. Now let's have a look at those obsolete items. So if we open up our DQMH project, public API, notice how there are now two start modules. That's because in DQMH4, when this VI was originally created, we were using the VI server control value set methods and the run VI VI server method. Whereas now in DQMH5 and DQMH6, we're using the much more efficient start asynchronous call function, which is this function here. And so now this start module 2 has been created, this is the start VI that you should be using going forwards. And one thing I like to do to remind myself is to click on the old start VI and in the icon I put a red cross. Like so. And that just reminds me that this VI we can now treat as depreciated. In this video, we looked at the new things in DQMH6, such as the DQMH Consortium, the right-click menu so we can see where broadcast events will end up, how we can better implement error handling in helper loops, and how we can upgrade from older versions of DQMH to newer versions. However, if you search for DQMH6 via Google and go to the Delacore website, you'll notice there are quite a few small updates and bug fixes, so it's well worth updating from DQMH5 to DQMH6. As always, please leave a like, subscribe and comment below on your new favourite feature. And I'll see you next time.